Business Value Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Mastery Partners, where our mission is to equip business owners to maximize business value so they can transition their business on their terms. Our mission was born from the lessons we've learned from over 100 business transactions, which fuels our desire to share our experiences and wisdom so you can succeed. Now, here's your host, CEO of Mastery Partners, Tom Bronson. Hi, this is Tom Bronson, and welcome to Maximize Business Value, a podcast for business owners who are passionate about building long-term sustainable value in their businesses. So in this episode, I'd like to welcome our guest, Jeff Sandine. He's the president of Sandine Strategies, a wealth management firm here in Dallas. I've known Jeff for several years, initially, I think through Business Navigators, the servant leadership organization that I've talked about that's based here, and more recently through an organization that Jeff actually founded about, I think, a year and a half ago uh, to support business owners. It's called Business Pros. I'm a member of Business Pros and sit on that advisory board. Jeff has a true servant leader's heart, and I'm excited to finally get him on our podcast. So welcome to Maximize Business Value, Jeff. Tell us about Sandine Strategies. Well, first, Tom, it's a pleasure to be here. I, uh, I know that you've been extremely busy with podcasts, and I'm, I'm glad to be on there also. Uh, so Sandine Strategies is a wealth management and comprehensive financial planning firm. We'll work with business owners and executives on their personal financial planning um, to put, put together their vision for their future, and then an investment strategy that helps them get there. Awesome. Awesome. So what's your background and how did you become a wealth manager? Very, it goes back kind of deep. I have an MBA in finance and actually spent the first 15 years of my career in corporate finance. But I made a midlife sort of career decision where I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I wasn't a software guy or an engineer, but I knew money, right? So in 1996, I got into this business. I started off on the insurance side of the business at a company that was venturing into wealth management and financial planning. But eventually, after nine years, I decided to leave that because it wasn't quite the perfect environment for me. And in 2005, I founded Sandine Strategies, who is uh, affiliated with uh, LPL Financial, offering securities through, through them. And they're also a member of the SIPC and FINRA. Oh, awesome. Okay. So I uh, decided to get the, to scratch the entrepreneurial itch, did we? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so let's jump right in and let's talk about the role of a wealth manager. You know, Jeff, when when I engage or when Mastery Partners engages with our new clients, one of the things that we ask about during our assessment is to tell us about the relationship that the business owner has with their wealth management firm. And I'm always surprised at the number of business owners that don't really have a wealth management firm. But I think that that may be because of a misperception of what wealth managers do or can do for them. So for many business owners, 80% plus, some of them over 90% of their net worth is typically tied up in their business. And therefore, financial assets, if they have any, are relatively small compared to the value of the business. These business owners may feel that they don't need a personal financial advisor. So in what ways can a financial advisor bring value to these business owners who have most of their net worth tied up in their business? Well, when, when I first started working with a business owner, I, I view the vis- business as it should be, which is a large component of their portfolio. And it, it shows the first issue, and that's concentration of wealth. But um, from a business owner standpoint, maybe what they are thinking in terms of financial advice is they don't have anything that the advisor can charge a commission on to make money, right? I mean, how is, how are you going to make money if I don't have anything to invest? And the way we make money is by giving advice. The the plans that I, the financial plans I put together, there's a fee for that. And it doesn't really, it's kind of like your business 
where you create the plan and then they can decide whether they want to implement it themselves or not. They can choose me for the implementation or they could choose to go someplace else or do it themselves. So that's maybe one misconception is there's advice, financial advice available for a fee out there, whether or not you have money to invest. Um, and, and then if there is money to invest, we can certainly work with them on that. And if they're not maximizing their ability to create investments outside the business, that's certainly something that we'll bring up to help them diversify. You know, one of the things that I always remind business owners when we talk about value, um, the value of the business, um, the, the uh, business owner typically thinks that all uh, that a wealth planner or wealth manager can do is really manage the assets. But I remind them that um, when they think about the value of their business and the exit uh, time for their business uh, and what value they need to exit their business, a wealth manager is somebody or a financial advisor is somebody that can tell them how much money they'll need to live their lifestyle. That's the way I simplify it uh, for them. Uh, because a lot of business owners are are throwing a dart uh, at uh, trying to figure out what their business is worth. Most of them do not take the time to find out what their business is worth. And therefore, they're plucking a number out of the air that it feels to them like the number that they're going to need to retire on. I say, take all that guesswork out of it. Get a financial advisor who can help you really peg what that number is going to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, in fact, the, the first question I ask them, if, if we just in an introductory meeting is what their vision for their future is. I mean, what does life look like outside of the business? And I find that a lot of them haven't given that any thought at all, which is not a very good place to end up. And I think you're familiar with some of the statistics too. I mean, if, if a business owner sells their business but they don't have plans on what to do next with the rest of their life, there's a very good chance they're going to regret selling the business because they've lost their purpose in life. No, oh, that's true. That uh, That is clearly one of the things that we really walk them through in our four-step process. What we want to explore with them, what does life after business look like? Uh, but we want them to get realistic. We want them to, to uh, really understand what value they need in order to retire on. That's not, I mean, that's kind of the floor, right? The, we, we hope to, to create a business that's more valuable than that to give them plenty of cushion. Uh, but it's so important for them to really understand where they need to be uh, because otherwise, uh, honestly, uh, as you and I have talked about many times, the, the number one reason why businesses don't sell, why there is only a 17% success rate for businesses selling is business owners have, do not have a realistic understanding of the value of their business. And they're pegging it typically to a number that they think they need to retire on. And again, that's why I say, let's take all the guesswork out of that. Let's get with a financial planner. If they don't have a financial advisor, then we try to pair them up with a financial advisor and we refer Jeff Sandine all the time. Uh, and uh, to, to help that business owner really understand that. I, I just, uh, I'm so passionate about business owners really having a financial advisor because you touched on another point that's really, really important that, um, that not only do they need to think about what they're doing in the future, but if they're planning for that exit, it's important to be able to allocate their assets properly, right? Going forward uh, in their estate plan and their in their uh, in their financial plan, and so so I'm a big fan of planning way in advance. I, I wonder how many times do you get a call from a business owner the day after he sold his business said, I have this big check now, what do I do? <laughs> and then, well, unfortunately, that doesn't happen very often, but that's not really my style anyway to parachute in after the deal's done. I mean, I, I'm much like you and I'd rather be part of the process. Absolutely. I, I really think that as I think about the people that need to surround a business owner, 
uh, financial uh, planner is absolutely a key uh, seat at that table, you know, along with a CPA and a great business attorney, perhaps an estate planner, you know, certainly a value advisor, someone like us who can help improve the value of the business. But there's a lot of seats and, and, and the financial advisor is absolutely key to that. So, so uh, we, uh, we've kind of taken a little uh, sidebar here, but, but let's get back on, on creating a financial plan. How do you go about creating a financial plan for a business owner? So one of the things I like to do is go through a little exercise with business owner and spouse. Um, and, and I have, I have them make a bucket list. It's like money's no object. What are the 10 things that you want to do before you check out? Right. And um, some of those will factor into the retirement plan. And it, it's a nice exercise to get them thinking about things. And then what we'll do before we even create a financial plan, we'll, we'll put a price on those. So if one of the things they want to do is travel to all seven continents, including Antarctica, you know, we'll do research on what that type of trip would cost and put it into the plan. And so what we end up with is their vision for their future at in future dollars. And then we discount that back as to what they need today. And that's where the value of the business comes in. So you want to do all of these things? Well, you need $4 million in five years to do that. And you can just use major basic discounting to come up with what the value of the business and the rest of his assets needs to be today and find out what the gap is between their plan, what they said they want to do, and what their business is actually worth. So that's where the connection comes in. And at this point, we still don't know what the business is worth. We know we have what their idea of what it's worth. But that, that's oftentimes a place where we bring in at least, you know, somebody to give us a better idea of what the value of the business is today. Of course, as you know, by the time that we've actually made an introduction to a business owner, We've already calculated what the business is worth, uh, what it would trade for uh, on the market, and uh, and that's typically an eye opener uh, for them. But then we have a baseline, and then our next step is really to get the financial advisor involved so that we can determine what the value of the business needs to be. Because then, if we know where it is and we know where it needs to be, then we can build a strategy to get there. Right. right. That's that is such a key part of the beginning of our process uh, with our clients. So, uh, so I love that. I assume that you take into account all the kind of the other things, the normal expenses and stuff that they have to that, that's going to sustain them, that kind of thing too. Yeah, the other important document that they put together is their household expenses today, and then we can talk about you know, whether they stay or go or increase or, but it, the, the financial plan itself is actually a very cash flow based document that considers taxes, rates of return, the different investments. So. I love that. I'm going to, I have about 1.5 million uh, frequent flyer miles. I'm just going to use those to go to Antarctica. So <laughs> uh, Antarctica, by the way, is not on my bucket list. If I'm going to oh, be in the freezing no. cold, uh, I'm going to be standing at the top of a mountain with some waxed boards strapped to my feet. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> so wh what's the biggest challenge um, uh, of financial planning process of the whole process that you go through? What is the big or what are what are some of the challenges or what's the biggest challenge uh, in the process for business owners? Well, the, the biggest challenge actually is to get them to start and, and actually go through the process. I mean, a financial plan with me will take three meetings over the course of a month, um, and they're not short meetings either. So the business owner has to be committed to it and, you know, be ready to sit down. And, and, that's, and that's where the spouse comes into play a lot of times. It's like, you know, we need to do this, you know, you just need to take the time to do this. So it's, it's definitely a family um, endeavor. Um, and then, you know, the just I mean, with business owners, as you know, they're, they're so focused on day to day operations that just to get them to get their head up and, you know, look past this week is probably the biggest challenge. 
That's that's clearly the biggest challenge that we have too. You're you're right. I, I call it stirring the sauce. Uh, business owners who are so involved in the day-to-day operation of their business. That, by the way, lends itself to owner dependency, uh, which reduces the value of the business. So uh, we try to encourage our business owner uh, clients to really kind of get above that fray so that they have more time to think strategically about their business. The greatest ideas in the business typically come from them. Uh, and, and so not only that, but the greatest ideas about the fu- their own future would also come from them. But if you don't set aside that time uh, to plan in advance, then, uh, then, then the future is just going to happen to you, uh, I like to say. And so, so uh, we, we were a very common issue with us too, because business owners are very focused uh, typically on their business. They need to sometimes move just a little above that, get up to a 50,000 foot view uh, so that they can focus on the other things that are uh, really important off into the future. You know, one of my favorite questions to ask business owners is, what happens to your business or more importantly to your family if something happens to you? Uh, and typically that causes them to, to be a little bit more introspective and, and has them, it forces them to step back a little bit and think about those things. So are there some common blind spots that business owners have in respect to their personal finances? One, one of the, I came up with an interesting one just in the last month or so, and, and it's with respect to diversifying their, you know, their asset portfolio. Um, Many business owners don't trust financial markets. They don't trust Wall Street. And they say, you know, I can take half a million dollars and buy this piece of, piece of equipment, and I know what that's going to produce and how that's going to affect the bottom line. But they don't think about it. So they, they compare that. It's like, what can you get me with that half a million? And, of course, we can't promise anything, right? And they don't trust Wall Street already, and it's like, I'm just going to invest back in my business, which exacerbates the problem of asset concentration. It's, it's taking them away from being diversified. So I think that's a pretty big blind spot. It's, it's trusting themselves and not delegating the trust to professionals in other areas of finance. Yeah, you, you talk about um, you know, concentration risk. Uh, we talk about that in two contexts, of course, the, the financial concentration risk that you're talking about, but also very common in businesses is customer concentration risk, where uh, there's a high percentage of the revenue is tied to one or two or a handful of customers. Uh, and that's business owners intuitively understand that that is risky, uh, right? Um, I wish that they understood more that um, that a a concentration risk in their financial assets is just as risky. Uh, so, uh, so I'm glad that you brought that up. We're talking with Jeff Sandine. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Every business will eventually transition, some internally to employees and managers, and some externally to third-party buyers. Mastery Partners equips business owners to maximize business value so they can transition their businesses on their terms using our four-step process. We start with a snapshot of where your business is today. Then we help you understand where you want to be and design a custom strategy to get you there. Next, we help you execute that strategy with the assistance of our amazing resource network. And ultimately, you'll be able to transition your business on your terms. What are you waiting for? More time? More revenue? If you want to maximize your business value, it takes time. Now is that time. Get started today by checking us out at www.masterypartners.com or email us at info at masterypartners.com to learn more. We're back with Jeff Sandine, president of Sandine Strategies, and we're talking about the role of a financial advisor for business owners. Now, of course, I can't ask you any specific investment advice. I mean, that's against the rules. And you told me that that was off the table. Uh, And so, but... But let's talk about some other things. What are some financial implementation ideas that would in, that should increase a business owner's net worth over time? I, I hope I'm not getting into a dangerous area there. No, I mean I, th- I think what you what we can talk about are different vehicles. I, I very, very common. Well, first of all, make the very first question is: 
do you have a 401k plan within your business? And are you maximizing that? I mean, that's, that's kind of step one, but depending on what they, what they want to do and what their business cash flow is, there's ways to turbocharge a 401k plan with profit sharing and other pension benefits that can really lead to the business owner putting a lot of money away if they have the cash flow to support that, which will help their diversification, building assets outside of the business. So what we'll look at is, and, and again, that's, that's just, that's not necessarily me even managing the money for them. That's just part of the financial advice that they should be getting, which is independent, unbiased advice. And so, so that's what I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at ways for them to, to build their, their total net worth and uh, reduce the concentration risk of their company. I also have read an interesting book called Every Family's Business. Have you read that one yet? I have not, but now it's going to go on my list. You know how much I read. The, um, it, it talks about for multi-generational if, so if a business owner has multi-generation plans and ideas, how to treat the business as an asset, but that the next generation may not run the business the same business or the, sa- or the existing business the same way. And so we can get them talking with their family about what the rest of the intentions are for their kids or, you know, whoever's next in line um, to, to take that business over and over if that's something that they have planned. I like that. Uh, treating the business as an asset too many times, it basically just becomes a vehicle to support their lifestyle. Uh, and that's a, that is a giant mistake. I'm going to get this book, Every Family's Business. Is that what you said it is? Yeah, uh, I've got it. Next time I see, I'll give you a copy. I've got an extra one. Well, I'm hoping that maybe I'll see it tonight. Who knows? Um, so uh, I'll, I'll come right over. You know, you bring up a, a great point, and one that I've heard many times before, the whole 401k issue. Of course, many bo- business owners take advantage of that because there are some some rules for accelerated, um, you know, uh, opportunity to put some cash into a, a retirement plan. A lot of business owners set up 401ks for their employees, but don't participate because they they believe that the value of the business is going to take care of their retirement. Um, and I, personally, I just I think if you've got the vehicle and the and the ability to be able to to do that, that is a smart, smart, smart way uh, by by participating in a 401k, even if it's your own business. Uh, to to diversify the portfolio. So is that what I'm hearing from you? Absolutely. And and here's an interesting thing that you, that most business owners probably don't know is if you if you turbocharge a 401k for yourself, the tax savings will be enough to fund the portion that is a contribution to the employees. I did not know that. So it's it's almost like you're spending free money benefit for the benefit of the employees. So, I mean, I was shocked when I first saw that, but I've seen it twice in the last month. Holy now, just, a, just a question. Does Sandine strategies, do you guys handle 401ks for business? No, I don't. What I'll do is I'll meet the business owner. And if they have an interest, I have a specialist that d- puts together 401k and pension plans. Oh, right. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I didn't know if that was part of your portfolio. In fact, I'm sitting here going, huh, I wonder if he does that. So uh, as much as I know about your business, right? Because we, uh, we talk a lot. So uh, what recommendations can a, a financial advisor make to potentially increase the value of a closely held business? Uh, you know, I, I think just making sure the business owner is aware of some biases that he has with respect to the business and, and back to treating the business as an asset. Um, he should, he should, when he's looking at investing more money in the business, really take a close look at the return on investment that he's getting out of that. And is that the best use of his capital? So we can have those types, not to tell him how to run his business, but to make sure that he's, 
he or she are not just sending good money after bad if it's chasing a bad idea. One, one problem that people in general have is they fear sunk costs. So if he has, if there's a project, project or an un, maybe an unprofitable part of the business and he needs to make an additional investment to support that unprofitable business, you almost have to look at that as starting from this, this dollar. If I spend this dollar on that project, is that the best use or do we just need to cut ties with it and stop whatever that is that's draining? So that, that's part of where I'll put a business owner's hat on and consult with them on ways to make good investment decisions with respect to their company's capital. Yeah, that's uh, that's a real challenge. A lot of times business owners sometimes mistakenly think that if I just can keep investing in this and it's, it's killing me right now, but if I keep investing, I'll be able to turn it around. But that's a serious issue, right? That, uh, that, that, um, that sometimes it's just better to cut your losses, move on and go make money uh, some other way. So I like that in, in terms of advice. Look, there well, are- and, I, and- and, and, and I actually run into that often in managing people's portfolios where they're, they, people in general do not want to sell losing investments because it admits they made a mistake. It's an admission of, of error that they bought something they shouldn't have done. That's called dis- disposition effect. And it's one of the many biases that affect people in finance. Well, I hadn't really thought about that. I'm always looking, you know, toward the end of the year with my financial advisors to pick out the losers <laughs> so, so I can reduce my tax consequences, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, yeah, it doesn't feel good to, to admit that you've made an investment mistake, but you're right. I mean, you do get to write those losses off against other gains a lot of times. So Yeah, exactly. If, I, if I've had gains then I do my best to offset it because I, w- I want it to be a net zero uh, if I can, unless it's something that I that I just feel very strongly about. It's a, a segment or a, a business that I strongly feel is going to come back. But, uh, but of course, I have to recognize that I have no control over that too. Uh, so, uh, you know, owning a, a security is you're putting your trust in the people that run that business much like the investors that I've had in my businesses. They put their trust in me to run the business and give them a return on investment. So uh, so uh, interesting uh, thoughts there. Look, there are literally thousands of people, <laughs> yeah, probably even here in the Metroplex, uh, that, that, by the way, for those listeners that are outside of the area, the Metroplex is what we call the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but there are literally thousands and thousands of people positioning themselves as financial advisors to business owners. What are some useful criteria for business owners to narrow the field of candidates that they want to interview for for the job of being their financial planner? Excellent question. And there's some real basic things to look for. I, I would, first of all, not work with anybody that's in the first five years of being in the business. The the five-year retention rate for somebody that gets in this business is 20%. So four out of five people who get in are not there in five years. So you definitely want to work with somebody that's experienced. I believe that um, working with someone who has fiduciary responsibility, uh, and one way you could automatically get that is by working with a certified financial planner. We have a code of ethics that we adhere to and we hold ourselves to fiduciary standards. But there's also a regulatory standard um, that's, that's um, put out by the, the uh, Department of Labor. It has a fiduciary standard and it's basically holding yourself out to act in the best interest of the client, which seems like nonsense. I mean, why, why wouldn't they? But for example, just if, if there's an investment that is um, it's where the advisor is being compensated by a commission, that would be, that's a conflict of interest that needs to be disclosed. Um, fiduciaries, generally speaking, 
do not do commission business. They're just doing based on fees for assets under management or fees for advice. So those are a few things. I would, I would definitely work with someone who's experienced and work with a fiduciary. And you can just ask if they're functioning as a fiduciary. Yeah, I like that. That's really important and and sort of a nuance. There are a lot of uh, firms out there that don't act as a fiduciary, and so if you don't know what that means, then then uh, then be sure to get involved in it. before you make a decision who your financial advisor is going to be. Uh, be asking those those kinds of questions. I think those are great questions. Anything else that you want to add there, or is that uh, kind of the the way to look at it? That's, I, I would say that's if you if you ask those two questions, you're gonna you're probably gonna end up with somebody who knows what they're doing. Awesome. So one last business question. Uh, this podcast is all about maximizing business value. So what's the most important thing you recommend business owners do to build long term value in their business? Well, you know, I, I kind of I looked at that question and I, I hear that question and I I think. The idea is to build wealth. It's to build, build the business, maximize the value of the business so that they're increasing their wealth. And I, I come back to treating that business as an asset and having a family plan that deals with that business so that it maximizes the wealth of the family. And that's from my perspective, just making sure that conversations within the family are happening to, to allow that business to really leave a legacy and really do great things for that family is, is my best advice. I like that. Uh, I think that's really important and uh, um, something that uh, business owners should give serious consideration to. So, of course, I know you're a listener to my podcast, and for our longtime listeners, they're always looking forward to this question. I always ask the bonus question, Jeff. What personality trait has gotten you into the most trouble through the years? Well, I think it's one that you're aware of. I am very detail-oriented, and what I, it helps me in my day-to-day -day dealings with clients and money, for sure. But from a business owner's standpoint, it's probably held me back in terms of scaling up and getting the growth that I could get out of the firm. And it's an issue that I'm aware of that uh, I can take steps to fix. One of, one of my ideas is to get a junior Jeff inside the firm that will take equally good care of my clients so that I can be more strategic in thinking about the business. Yeah, I, I, that detail orientation, um... Uh, is a challenge, right? And so um, a little bit of perfectionism coming out on you, Jeff. But uh, hey, that's the trait that I want the most from you as a financial advisor. But but you're right. It also hinders uh, a, a business owner being able to make progress. So how can our viewers and listeners get in touch with you? For sure. Um, I, I'm open on email, Jeff, Jeff at jeff.sandine at lpl.com. My phone number at the office is 972-789-1201. And I love talking to business owners. Um, we're not, we, what they'll have to be ready for, though, is we're not necessarily going to talk about wealth management. It's, you know, what's going on in the business and how can I help you um, to solve the issues that are most important to you in your business? That's so very important. It's one of the things I love about you, Jeff. You are such a servant leader and have a servant leader's heart. Uh, and so you're there uh, not only to potentially get a client, but to help the, the people that you work with. And I, and I just love that about you. So thank you for being our guest today. You're welcome, Tom. It was a blast. I really enjoyed visiting with you. Awesome. You can find Jeff Sandine at www.sandinestrategies, S-A-N-D-E-N-E, strategies.com, or on LinkedIn. And of course, you can always reach out to me and I'd be happy to give you a warm introduction to my good friend, Jeff Sandine. This is the Maximize Business Value podcast, where we give practical advice to business owners on how to build long-term sustainable value in your business. Be sure to tune in each week and follow us wherever you found this podcast. 
And don't forget, we love your comments and we love your suggestions for future podcasts. So until next time, I'm Tom Bronson reminding you that you need to hire a great wealth management firm, even if you think you don't need one now, while you maximize business value. Thank you for tuning into the Maximize Business Value podcast with Tom Bronson. This podcast is brought to you by Mastery Partners, where our mission is to equip business owners to maximize business value so they can transition on their terms. Learn more on how to build long-term sustainable business value and get free value-building tools by visiting our website, www.masterypartners.com. That's master with a Y, masterypartners.com. Check it out. Perfect. I wouldn't make any changes on that.